Yesterday I uploaded my first official Northern Ireland video. I investigated the differences between Northern Irish football and Irish football. It's really, really confusing. Um, it's even hard to use the right terminology in certain places. There's two national teams, two league structures, two cup competitions. It's crazy. It really, really is. And these videos where I come to sort of new places I've never been to before are as much a discovery journey for me as much as I hope they are for you, the viewer. And today we're going to be doing something very special in this video. We are going to be visiting every single one of the 12 Northern Irish Premier League teams or Premier Division teams. Again, see, I'm still not 100% sure of the entire terminology. There's four teams in Belfast. We're going to finish off back in Belfast. I'm in Belfast right now, but we've got to get on the road and cover miles and miles around the whole country. I'm going to have to fill up my car in a sec, which um, is getting more and more expensive by the day, as you know. So please do hit that like button. Please do subscribe if you're new. And let's go and check out every single team in Northern Ireland's top tier. Right, yeah, look, here we go. Look, the 2022-23 NIFL Premiership, known as the Dansk Bank Premiership. Here, look, here's all the teams. Look, Belfast, there's four within Belfast, as you can see there. We'll be doing them at the end. We're going to head north to Carrick, Larne, and then all the way through there, and then back down towards the border near the EU, of course, and then back up uh, Glenavon, and then back into Belfast. We'll probably see the rest of those teams tomorrow. It's going to be an exciting journey, so let's go. Ground number one of the day is open. We'll be going to have a look in a second, but look, we are at the home of Carrick Rangers. I obviously meet people from uh, all different parts of the world when I go to football games and stuff. And when I was at Rangers against Red Bull Leipzig, um, there was loads of people. I was there seven or eight hours early trying to get a ticket for the game. Um, and I got one eventually, the semi-final of the Europa League one of the greatest games I've ever been to, YouTube or not, just throughout my whole life, it was incredible. And I met two guys there who were over from Northern Ireland and they didn't have a ticket for the game. I'm not sure if they even ever ended up getting one, but I was there for so long trying to get a ticket that um, I kept just walking around the stadium in different parts of um, just the area of um, around where Ibrox is and I kept bumping into them and they were from this area of Northern Ireland and they were telling me that I have to come and visit Carrick Rangers. I'll keep wanting to call them Michael Rangers after of course Man United's um, legendary midfielder. But yeah, Carrick Rangers, I always, whenever I like look to research stadiums in Northern Ireland and think I need to go and visit Carrick Rangers, I always think of those two guys that I met <laughs> at Ibrox. They were so funny. They were great to chat to. We spoke to them on camera and off camera for absolutely ages. And they were great guys. But yeah, look, here we are now. Carrick Rangers, apparently a semi-professional team, but they have played in Europe before. They won their first round of, I think it was the Cup Winners Cup before losing against Southampton. Yeah, it was the Cup Winners Cup in 1976-77. They beat a team from Luxembourg 4-3 on aggregate before losing 9-3 against Southampton on aggregate. It is time for me to do a big ground hopping video today. From what I can work out, Carrick have been a bit of a yo-yo club down the years. But look, as you can see here, that is the crest of the club established in 1939. But there's also this crest here, Spirit of 76. What is the Spirit of 76? Well, I told you about, of course, their cup winning cup exploits where they eventually lost against Southampton. They did win a European tie, amazingly. Um, but yet yeah, in the 1975-76 season, they did win the Irish Cup. So they have won a major trophy here within the country, have Carrick Rangers. And Carrick Rangers' main rivals are Larne. That is their most local sort of biggish team. Belfast isn't too far away, but Larne, they are another premiership club and they are rivals of these boys. Wow, look at that. It's not often that I'm driving to a place and you can see it from such a great vantage point up on a hill like this. But yeah, that is the home of Larne. Let's get on down there and take a closer look. Poor old Larne, who were formed in 1889. Look, as you can see there on the badge, 18. 89, an old club, poor old Larne, have a bit of an unwanted record. They have been runners-up of the Irish Cup and runners-up of the League Cup 
six and twice, six and two times respectively, without winning either. So I think they've been runners up of the two sort of main cup competitions of the nation eight times without ever winning one. I don't think they've ever won the top tier either. I think they might have won the championship, the second tier, but I don't believe that they've ever won um, either of the major cups or the top tier. They have won a handful of other um, competitions, but yeah, look, here we come now into the home of Larn FC. Wow, and look at this, here we go. Another ground that is open. Ground hopping in Ireland and Northern Ireland seems so, so easy. Here we are like Inver Park and Larn actually have an incredible European record, believe it or not. I do believe they've only ever played in Europe once so far. They will be playing in Europe this season as well for their second ever time. But last season in the Europa Conference League, I know people give the Europa Conference League a bad name, right? But actually it gives teams like Larn a chance to actually play in Europe. I really enjoy it and um, I've been quite a big um, believer in it, especially sort of for Scottish teams where um, I live. It's great to see that they have more of a chance to actually go and play um, European football when they might not necessarily qualify for the Europa League or the Champions League. But yeah, Lahn actually played in the Conference League last year and they actually got quite far considering the sort of size of the club. Look. They actually played Bala Town from Wales, winning home and away in the first qualifying round. Then they beat AGF Aarhus of, um, of Denmark in the second qualifying round. And then at home, they beat Pacos de Ferreira of Portugal 1-0 before losing 4-0 away, sadly. And they are actually 370th in the UEFA um, rankings with their coefficient, Alan. So, yeah, I love the Conference League. I love that it gives um, teams like Lan a chance to play in Europe when they wouldn't necessarily ever really get much of a chance. As you would have seen from a few of those clips there in the montage, a few little likely lads on the pitch. Um, maybe future LAN stars who will be playing in the Europa Conference League in years to come for LAN and maybe for the Northern Ireland national team as well. Um, yeah, a really, really lovely ground. It looks like the pitch is AstroTurf. Please, guys, let me know in the comments what is the rules around AstroTurf and grass pitches here. In Scotland, of course, you can have Astro all throughout the pyramid. In England, there's a certain level. That once you cross that level, you can't have AstroTurf anymore. So what is the case with that within Northern Ireland? I would love to hear from you guys. Obviously, um, like I say, this is about me gaining knowledge through you as much as you through me, I hope. Um, I always feel like this is a bit of a, a two-way street on this channel. I love to hear what you guys say in the comments. And uh, yeah, you always seem to teach me so much great stuff before we head to ground number three of the day where i mean we're definitely gonna get in we have had so much luck recently within northern ireland and ireland i'm gonna step on the pitch of a europa conference league team here we go let's touch the i was gonna touch the corner flag let's touch the goal post here we go that is another goalpost touch, like I say, of a team with a fantastic European heritage. They've played six games in Europe, they've won four, they've drawn one, and they've lost one. Larn FC. I absolutely love what I do. Coming around different parts of the world and uh, and just visiting random football stadiums. Speaking of random football stadiums, we've seen two. Let's head on down to a third. Like with most ground hopping videos that always start really, really well, the luck always seems to run out at some point. And I won't be getting into the home of Ballymena United, but here we are now, showgrounds looks like the biggest stadium that we've seen so far just from the looks of it from here here we are look you can see right in to be fair looks like a fantastic view of a big like mountain through the back there as is usually the case with these ground hopping videos it's just like a flying visit i'll do and i always plan to come back to places for games or specific videos about these clubs um so i will have to come and cover ballymena a little bit more um, specifically, so I'm sorry if you're a Ballymena fan I couldn't get in 
um, today. I would love to come back. They do have a bit of European heritage themselves. They played in Europe a number of times. They have also won the Irish Cup six times as well. And it is due to a number of those cup wins that have qualified them for Europe down the years. Before we do head down to stadium number four, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to Foco for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. As I said earlier, I'm going to have to fill up in a bit and uh, these videos aren't easy to make so it isn't without great sponsors um, that I'm able to do these videos. So a massive, massive thank you to them. Please do support me and support them by going down to the top link in the description box below and checking out their incredible range of officially licensed football gear. I know a lot of you from Northern Ireland will support a Man United or a Liverpool as well as maybe like a local team as well. So they do stock a ton of different products from loads of different clubs all around the world, not just the UK. They also have a great range of Northern Ireland gear as well. So yeah, like I say, please do go and check it out it is all stuff that you'd buy in like club shops and officially licensed places so it is top notch stuff i've had a load of stuff from them before and it really is incredible foco a huge thank you for sponsoring this video you really are helping me and helping this channel keep going all right guys please do check them out top link below thank you very much right ground number four here we come very lucky to have connected to a local radio station on the way here because I heard them call it coal rain, not colour rain like I thought it might be. I live in Scotland and I'm from England, as you can tell from the voice, where, um, yeah, when I, when I live in Scotland, there's so many place names that are so hard to pronounce. It's very similar here in uh, Northern Ireland as well. But yeah, here we are at coal rain. I'm getting sort of rugby park vibes from the colour of the stadium just now, but there's a club shop open. Let's go and have a look, see if we can't have a look around the stadium today. Really nice staff in the club shop. They said to come around and check the gates. If the gates are open, I can go in. The gates this side aren't open, but there are others around the other side. So we'll have a look. But um, yeah, this is the showground as well. Wasn't the last stadium we were at the showground? I'm pretty certain, but we've seen some lovely stadiums there. I love these old grounds. Oh, there's a good bit of terrace in across there as well. Coleraine, another team within Northern Ireland have a fantastic European heritage. I know in England, where I'm from and Scotland to a certain extent but not so much in England we're spoiled with European football every team's played but a lot of teams have played European football down the years I'm a Liverpool fan and obviously we've won the Champions League and European Cup numerous times and the bigger clubs all play in Europe every year and play the bigger teams but I always find it amazing to see teams of this size and stature having played in European competition which is why like I was saying earlier I really like the Conference League it gives smaller teams a chance to play in UEFA competitions when they wouldn't necessarily have ever had that chance. Cole Rain have even played in the European Cup, the equivalent of what the Champions League is now. That was in the 1970s and it was against Feyenoard. They got knocked out in the first round, 11-1 on aggregate, but you know, they still played Feyenoard, one of the greatest teams of the time, I suppose. They did win the European Cup in 1970, didn't they? So they'd have played them, I think, four or five years after that. So yeah, Cole Rain have played a team that were once European champions, got battered 11-1, but you know, we'll give it to them. Look at the size of this compared to De Kuyp in Rotterdam. Alright, let's see what the damage is going to be. My lord, that is painful. What a scam. What a scam. I remember when it was like £1.50 and I thought that was a lot. That was about a year ago. It's gone up like another 50p in like less than a year. Absolute scam. 81 quid to fill up my car. Please, please just hit that like button. Oh, I think that was the longest drive yet without a stadium. I was like an hour 45 just to get from when I last spoke to you to here where we are now, which I think is the club I pronounced wrongly in the video I uploaded today. Um, it's already up that I like filmed edited yesterday. My difference between Ireland and Northern Ireland, Dungannon Swifts. Dungannon? 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 I think I called them Dunnigan, I think, yesterday Swifts. Someone commented about it, but um, yeah, again, some extremely hard place names to say. Wow, as you can see, the pitch is being completely relayed. No grass here. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a huge amount for me to see here or really people to talk to. There's the man in the tractor behind me who's obviously uh, relaying the pitch. Look at these old turnstiles as well. Um, I do really, really like these uh, 
these old grounds um, where you can still like kind of stand and stuff. Um, but yeah, like, as you can see right now, being uh, being done up. But an interesting fact about uh, Dungannon Swifts um, is the fact that they have played in everybody's UEFA favorite UEFA competition, the Intertoto Cup back in 2006. They've also played in the UEFA Cup as well once. So the UEFA Cup that has been won six times by Seville, the Rangers got to the final of Europa, Cup, uh, Europa League now, of course. Um, the secondary European competition has been like played in by the club that currently plays here, which more resembles something you'd really see in like the non-leagues of England or Scotland, a ground like this, look with the houses behind. Trying to think what this sort of reminds me of in terms of like size of ground, like the small stand there, and the rest of it you just have to sort of stand as obviously a seated area there as well. But um, obviously floodlights, that's a good sign of sort of a stature of a club. Is floodlights that's something that you need um, for SFA membership, for example, in Scotland, um, where I live, and obviously like the the kind of smaller stands here as well. It looks literally more like a non-league stadium. Yet of course they've played in the UEFA Cup and they've played in <laughs> the Intertoto Cup. I don't think they've always been a top tier club like they are now. I think that's more of a more modern thing for them. I think for the majority of their career, they were playing in more regionalized Ulster leagues and sort of the championship, the second tier. Five stadiums done. We're not even halfway through the league yet and I've been going for hours. Number six, here we come. Coming up to the next ground, there's a George Best mural. I feel like for almost all of the teams outside of Belfast, there isn't a huge amount of like top tier success or big cup success that is until this club and the next one that we'll be seeing two local rivals that we're a little bit closer back towards belfast now this video is taking a lot longer to film it always does i always look at the map and think i would like do, i'll do the maps on like the driving and stuff and i think i'll take this long and then eventually you will stop for lunch somewhere then you'll get chatting to someone at a stadium or this that and the other and it, things just end up taking way much longer than what you think but look here we are now at porter down football club who play at shamrock park believe it or not this looks like an incredible stadium and it's completely open look at this big grand entrance way here and it is open Water down, sign me up. This is an absolutely lovely stadium to have just stumbled upon here. Look, this stand here behind me looks a little bit more modern, as does that one over there. Long stand as well. But look at that one. That one looks a little bit more abandoned. There's sort of like cordoned off and stuff. It doesn't look like it is much use yeah there's like panels missing out of it and stuff but look as i showed you earlier we visited one or two stadiums that had plastic pitches not here look at that traditional grass you love to see it founded in 1887 this lot 135 years old that's an old football club we predate a lot of your probably favorite teams all around the world whoever you support they themselves have also played in the european cup um yeah they've won a few league titles actually let me tell you about the honors first here we go so four irish leagues three irish cups two irish league cups as well so they have won quite a lot they are quite a successful team here so i guess if you're a player in northern ireland this is a team that you'd be happy to play for with a good history like i say they have played champions league football actually uh they got knocked out of the first qualifying round of the Champions League against uh, Brobruisk from uh, Belarus. But they did play the European Cup in 1990-91, pre-Champions League days, and 91-92. Well, they must have won back-to-back -back titles. Um, but, like with, um, who was it that we saw? Cole Rain, I think it was, who lost 11-1 against Feyenoord. These boys lost 13-1 against Porto. Another actual winner of the European Cup slash Champions League at Porto, much like Feyenoord are as well, but poor Porto down 13-1. So this marks halfway 
through the entirety of the top tier of Northern Irish football. We've seen six stadiums so far in this video. We've got one more to see that's near here. And then there's four to see in Belfast. I'm gonna be filming that section tomorrow, still for this video. So stick around, this video isn't over yet. Do remember to hit that like button. Again, loads of effort and miles go into these vids. The last club that I'm gonna see, I'm actually going to see a match down in Ireland tomorrow, the League of Ireland game, Dundalk. I'm gonna go and see them play. I think they're playing UCD, University College Dublin, a team I've also made a video about. So um, yeah, when I go down there, I'm just gonna finish this video off by seeing Nuri when I'm there. Um, I thought it was a lot closer than what it was. Again, these videos always take longer than what I imagine. So I'm gonna see seven today. This is gonna be the penultimate one for today, but I'm gonna see five tomorrow and they'll be on the end of this video still. So yeah, love this stadium. Gonna have to come back for a game, but I'll see you down at the local rivals of these boys in just a second. So here we are at Glenavon, rivals of Porter down where we just were. And look, I will tell you about a little bit of what they've won before, but as you can see, these guys have been champions. That was in 1960. Look at some of the old players there. And it's amazing to see what the old people used to wear. Look, shirt and tie to the football, as opposed to the Stone Island that you see these days. And I'd like your answers. What do you think um, this ground looks like? And what do you think the grounds of today look like? Obviously, I'll be taking you to the ones in Belfast a little bit later on, or just this video in general. Um, it's still obviously gonna go on from now. I don't know what a few of them are gonna look like yet myself, but what do you think like this stadium and some of the other ones that I've shown you today are like in English and Scottish standards? Wow, look at this. A couple of mushrooms growing on the park. Of course, it is pre-season, so I'm obviously not expecting it to be uh, to be gleaming and shiny, of course. Although a lot of these stadiums have been open to me today, there's not been that many people around. I've not been able to like, even really chat to anybody. It's just been really, really quiet. Unless like a groundsman's in here doing some work elsewhere or painting something inside or something like that. Um, yeah, I've not actually spoken to anybody, but um, yeah, just been able to amble inside. It's absolutely fantastic. Look at this place. Grass pitch again as well. So yeah, these lads have won three leagues and seven cups. So that's 10 really major trophies. They've also won the League Cup, something called the City Cup, the Gold Cup. Why is it that every team that I've seen today has had a massive loss against another team who have won the European Cup? They played PSV in the UEFA Cup in 78 and they lost 11-2 on aggregate. So we've had a massive win for Feyenoord, a massive win for Porto and a massive win for PSV within the shores of Northern Ireland. I will be back. I'll have to do a full video here. I've got a lot planned tomorrow. I've got a match day vlog planned. I've got a full Glen Torren video planned and I've got to finish off this one as well. So I've got to film like two and a half videos um, tomorrow. Right now, I'm going to go back to the hotel, chill, edit this and get it ready for whenever I get to film and then edit the next part. Um, I've got a couple of match day vlogs that will be out before this one is able to come out. So I think this one won't be out until another two, three or four days after I'm actually filming this. Um, because like I said, I've got a few match day vlogs and they come out the day after. So yeah, I'm a busy boy. Please hit that like button. I'll see you tomorrow when this video continues. Good morning, everybody. It is the next day now. Recuperated a little bit, charged all my cameras, and I've just finished filming my own Glen Torren video. I'm not sure if that one will be out before this or after this. I can't quite figure it out yet. I've got a few match day vlogs to film. So um, yeah, this one will be out in and around when this one is. The video that I just filmed here was incredible. Check this out first and I'll see you down at the other stadiums very shortly. So as you say, this hasn't really changed in decades. And you can see from some of the terrace in here, 
I mean, it's just unbelievable. I love seeing these old stadiums. And this is where the home fans would be, and the away fans would be all around that side there. Yeah, you're quite right. So the home fans have this terrace, which is called the Sydney Main Terrace. So Sydney is, is that side of East Belfast behind yep. us. So this is where the home fans will be, and they also have the grass bank. So there's been many games where you'll not have been able to see a blade of grass here, just yeah. so many people. And the Benfica lot... game, you say? Yeah, Benfica. And, and then... Eusebio scored here? Yeah, Eusebio scored a penalty here, um, and we scored a penalty as well. And Glenn Torn actually went out to Benfica in the away leg, and we drew nil each at the Stadium of Light in Benfica. And Glenn Torn were the first team to go out in the away goals route in European football. Devastating, so, isn't it? Devastating way yeah. to go out. But against such a giant as well like that, and you got such a great result yeah, against them. Yeah, such a huge, huge team. I think they went on to the final that year against Man United and George Best East Belfast lad. Yeah, and that would have, and that would only have been maybe ten or so years after, or maybe twenty years after. Um, the bombing during the Blitz, and we can see the, I guess, the industrial sort of uh, docklands over there. And this was bombed because the Germans thought it was an oil. Yeah, so as you, you've quite rightly noticed, Glen Torn is so close to the shipyard, and I guess a lot of our roots and our success are, are based out of the shipyard, but that came full circle. So during the Blitz in the 1940s, we've actually been able to get the Luftwaffe photos, their reconnaissance photos, looking over. East Belfast and the shipyards and they thought this was an oil storage facility so it's called the oval it's an oval shape yeah and they marked it as an oil storage facility so there's three bombs dropped one on that corner one in the middle and then one on the far right. corner and the stadium was just completely obliterated and everything was destroyed so it was rebuilt um, in the late 1940s early 1950s by the fans and by the board. It's built by East Belfast people and it remains so today. And so right now we are in the Linfield Stadium, also the Northern Ireland National Team Stadium, Windsor Park. It is owned by Linfield. I finally covered, um, I finally sort of uh, cleared that up in my mind. I was just chatting to someone. They told me that, yeah, um, it's owned by Linfield, um, but it's an incredible stadium. Look, you can see the green and the blue. The green is obviously for the national team. The blue is for Linfield and the white in between, of course, the national team playing. Um, um, green and white Linfield sort of like blue and white as well so that is why there are sort of different color uh, seats for the national team and for Linfield I absolutely love that and um, yeah we are really getting through the stadiums now aren't we again I'm not a hundred percent sure how these are all going to fit together in my mind this has been a long video filmed over a long few days as well so I'll obviously include a montage of this place I'll include a few other clips that I've taken during this video um, but while I'm up here look at that there is the sponsor of this video FOCO if you haven't already yet please please do check them out like I say these trips cost a lot of money they take a lot of time up and they have a lot of resources and time like I say so if you could always support the sponsors that really really does help me out just go down to that top link check out some of their stuff they have some amazing Northern Ireland um, things like I said some great products all officially licensed all stuff you'd find from club shops again FOCO they're in here they're sponsoring the Northern Ireland stadium and national team as the Linfield Stadium as well and my videos as well they're a really really cool reputable company so do check them out remember top link below but yeah back to look Windsor Park just check this out Are you all Rangers fans as well yeah, as Linfield yeah, as well? Rangers. Who's your favourite Rangers player? Um, uh, Kent. Mine is Kent. Tavernier. Tavernier and? Uh, Bassey. Martin McGaggy um, won the European Silver Boot in oh. 1985. Here we go, what an honour. Think of all the names that have played in this pitch and there we go. I've also touched the goalpost here. We're really getting through the stadiums now in this video, aren't we? This could be a long vid and I'm very, very sorry if it is. But look, Crusaders, the flag of this team is uh, all up and down this road, look. There's uh, like houses with the flag of the football team down by the stadium called Seaview. They weren't always in the Football League of Northern Ireland, or Ireland at the time it may have been, but it could have been Northern Ireland at the time. Again, it gets confusing. Um, they were elected into the division 
after Belfast Celtic went out of the division. Belfast Celtic's a video that I'm probably going to have to make. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it this trip, but I've got loads of Irish videos that I'm not able to do this trip that I really, really want to do eventually. So I will be back, but Belfast Celtic were a team, um, as you can tell by the name of the team, Celtic. They were a um, Catholic-based team here in Northern Ireland, and they had to fold and leave um, the league, and they are no longer a club anymore. It's a really, really sad story. Um, there were just so many issues and troubles and fights and stuff that they eventually folded out the league. Really, really sad, but it was Crusaders who took their place. As I would have mentioned previously in this video, like the further outside of Belfast we went, sort of less successful the teams got in, in terms of sort of what they've won. Seems like the main like uh, successful teams are really concentrated in Belfast and specifically sort of win the big four here, um, of which this is one. Crusaders, seven league championships they've won, five Irish Cups and two League Cups, as well as an incredible European record. I can tell you about the European record. I'll overlay a couple of clips you may have seen in the montage just then of Emlyn Hughes, the Liverpool captain, handing over a pennant to who probably was the Crusaders captain at the time. Yeah, Crusaders played Liverpool in the European Cup. And again, it's incredible seeing um, how these teams have done in Europe, considering, look, what their kind of stadiums and the infrastructure of the club is like. Again, I put it to you, what kind of level of club do you think this would be in England or Scotland? But just look at their European record. They've played against Valencia in the European Cup Winners' Cup in the late 60s. They played Liverpool in 77. Incidentally, that was the year that Liverpool won their first European Cup. So Crusaders played against Liverpool a year that they, uh, that they uh, played in the European Cup. They lost 7-0 on aggregate, but actually that's probably not a bad result against the eventual win of what was the Champions League. They've played Fulham and Wolves in Europe and they will even play in Europe this season in one of the early qualifiers against a team from Gibraltar. Yeah, it's European qualifier um, time of the year, isn't it? And uh, it's really interesting to see who these clubs are playing against. And yeah, here we are now, Crusaders. Yeah, another club for me to say that I've been to and that I've ticked off. Fantastic, what a lovely ground this is. Right, just check this mural out over the road from Solitude, which is the name of the stadium. And look at this, 1879, Ireland's oldest. I think this is Ireland's oldest club, not just within Northern Ireland, of course we're taking off Northern Irish clubs today, but within the entirety of the island of Ireland. Look at that, 1879. Wow, check that out, that looks like a house. That's obviously old and it's like connected to part of the stadium there. But look, this whole part here looks like a house, but it's connected to the stadium. Look, it looks like maybe you'd have like walked through here once upon a time to enter the stadium. Maybe? Check that out. And look, we have one of these like plaques that you see all around the country, um, in England and in Scotland and everywhere else as well. Look, Ulster History Circle. John McCre McCready, McCready McC McCallery, 1849 to 1925, introduced association football to Ireland in 1879, founded Cliftonville. So he was the man who brought football to the island of Ireland. The entirety of it, all the teams that I've shown you in the last five or six, seven, eight videos, whenever this one comes out, are all after this one. This was the first one to do it, thanks to that man up there, Big John, a legend. This stadium is old school. Look at the roof on that place up, that stand up there. And then that like little building that I've shown you on the way in or whatever. This place is incredible. I love, love, love these old stadiums. Of course, I was at Glen Torren earlier and that one's incredible as well. We have a stand here. This looks like it's the McCallery stand, which is obviously the man who created football in Ireland, the man who brought football here. But yeah, look at this place. You've got the hills over there, of, uh, or the mountains, hills of Belfast. Um, but this place is unbelievable. Some of these old stadiums, they just have so much character, don't they? Check this out, let's see, look. Named in honor of the founder of Cliftonville Football Club and 
football in Ireland. Wow, what a historic place this is. This stand named after the man who brought football here. That is unbelievable. But now look, plastic pitch, I think. And I did learn at Glen Torren that it's like in Scotland where a lot of the clubs financially sort of need this for to be able to train on here. Obviously when it's a grass pitch, you can only really use it for games, can't you? So you can even rent it out to different groups. And it makes sense. I understand why teams in Scotland do it. And it sounds like it's the same here in Northern Ireland as well. And another really successful team here within the country, five league titles, eight cups and six league cups. They even played Celtic in a second round Champions League qualifier, um, I think less than 10 years ago, I think it was around 2014. Um, but yeah, they've got a bit of European heritage themselves, but again, another Belfast club with a lot of good history, a lot of honors won. And look, this stand named after the man who brought football here. And look how cool that old stand is up there with the like, even grass growing out the top of it. And this old building here, I wonder what it is, but yeah, like I say, I'm gonna have to come back and do like specific videos on these actual places. I really have no idea how long this video is gonna be. I've already um, sort I've worked out in my head that there's 12 stadiums even if I spend three minutes at each stadium that's 36 minutes so apologies if it's really long I do really enjoy these videos and I have to go into a little bit of depth about the teams I suppose but I really enjoy seeing them all and I've been filming so many videos in between this one some of it stadiums in one day some in another um, that it's hard to know where everything's gonna fall in my mind just now we have one more stadium to visit I'm gonna see Dundalk play today in the League of Ireland um, so I'm gonna have to leave Northern Ireland Ireland and go to the Republic of Ireland to watch that game um, but while I do I'm gonna pass through where the 12th stadium is that I finally need to visit so let's get down there it's quite fitting really that this is the last club we're gonna be seeing in this specific video because they are the last club to enter the league that we have been looking at in this uh, entire vlog they won the championship last year so congratulations to Newry City AFC uh, for reaching the top tier but as you'll notice look and as I just said Nuri City AFC and I hope I'm saying it right I mean like I've mentioned a few times I do find pronunciation hard even within the UK and Northern Ireland where I am right now Nuri City AFC the A was added um, about 10 years ago because the original club was wound up it was Nuri City FC but the AFC was added so it's like a bit of a Phoenix club or whatever but yet another stadium that we are getting access to today. This has been one of the most successful ground hopping videos we've ever done. And it's been an, a, an entire league one as well. And the gate's open, but there's nobody here. It's a quiet place. Here's Nuri City AFC, and you may be able to see some more floodlights behind the stadium. There's another stadium here. There's like a bit of a complex of stadiums. There's some Astro pitches around there. I've got a feeling that might be a GAA stadium, the Gaelic football. So yeah, it's been, we are quite near the Irish border now. Um, so yeah, it's been quite the journey, hasn't it? Where did it start? God, I've almost forgotten already the complete journey that we've taken, but it started in Tesco car park a day or two ago. And it feels like I've been filming this video for weeks when it's been over the course of like two or three days. So I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Please do hit that like button and please do subscribe as well. I will be coming back to Ireland loads and loads to cover these teams in a lot more detail. Like I say, fly and visit at each one just now. So I can finally say I have ticked off the entirety of the top tier of Northern Ireland for this season anyway. Of course, it will change as the years go by with promotion and relegation. But look, here we are now. Look at these clubs. What do you guys and especially my English and Scottish viewers. Where do you guys think that these teams would sort of sit within the pyramid? And I've asked you a few times, but I'd love to hear it from you in the comment section below, of course. Some of the teams are actually competing in the SPFL Trust Trophy next season. Um, that's become a thing again after COVID and stuff for um, foreign um, teams to compete in that. I think there's a few from Wales, a few from England and a few from Northern Ireland. I've got a feeling Linfield might be in it. So be a really good um, test that competition to see where Linfield would fit within the entirety of the SPFL. Can they go on and win the SPFL Trust Trophy against the quote unquote lower league sides of Scotland? If they can, then we know that they can, uh, they can do it against the best um, maybe in the Premiership as well. But yeah, look at that. Win this Jan Mulby frame shirt for five pounds. Wow, I wasn't expecting to see that here at Newry City AFC. I'm off to a match now. 
This video will be uploaded after the match day vlog, which I'm going to tonight. I'm going to Dundalk in the League of Ireland against UCD, a team that I've covered before as well. So really looking forward to that. Please, please do subscribe. I really hope you've enjoyed this. I've loved checking out all of Northern Ireland stadiums. It's been an absolute honor. <laughs> this is quality. Honestly, I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave some videos on screen. Please do click on one to carry on watching. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.